Hi everyone, welcome to another question on summary. In these kind of questions, we need to see which of the four statements are true and then we need to figure out which one of them captures the essence of the passage in the best possible way. Let's have a look at the passage. Physics is a pure science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter without regard to whether it will afford any practical benefit or not. So physics doesn't really deal with the practicality of things. Engineering is the correlative applied science. So this is a pure science and this is engineering is an applied science in which physical theories are put to some specific use such as building a bridge or a nuclear reactor. Engineers obviously rely heavily on the discoveries of physicists but an engineer's knowledge of the world is not the same as a physicist's knowledge because engineers are working in a real environment and uh, physicists are working in a theoretical environment. In fact, an engineer's know-how will often depend upon physical theories that from the point of pure physics are false. So it's saying that whatever an engineer does, sometimes it will be contradictory to what the physics says. And there are some reasons for this. First, Theories that are false in the purest and strictest sense are still sometimes very good approximations to the true one. So something might not be always true 100% exactly all the time, but if it is something which works 99.9999% of the time, an engineer would take it as true and build everything around that. And often I've added virtue of being much easier to work with. So once you take these sort of good approximations, they make it easier to work with. Second, sometimes the true theories apply only under highly, highly idealized conditions. So let's say something like uh, friction, for example, in uh, we must have all done physics questions where you have assumed that the friction is zero, but the real world doesn't work that way, which can only be created under controlled experimental situations. On the other hand, engineers can't build frictionless roads, for example. The engineer finds that in the real world, theories rejected by physicists yield more accurate predictions than the ones that they accept. So the engineers kind of do a compromise. They sometimes see that whatever physicists have rejected, sometimes those theories also work in the real world. Let us now look at the summaries and see which one captures the essence of the passage in the best possible way. The relationship between the pure and applied science is strictly linear, with the pure science directing applied science and never the other way around. So it says that whatever happens in pure science, something like physics, it goes to applied science and applied science does not contribute to the pure sciences. That's not essentially what the paragraph is talking about. The paragraph is talking about that is engineering. It derives from physics. It derives from uh, pure sciences, but it also sometimes rejects uh, pure sciences and it does approximations. So it is not an exact summary of the passage. Though engineering draws heavily from pure sciences, this is correct. It contributes to knowledge. Yes, it does add to the entire value by incorporating constraints and conditions in the real world. So it has the real world application of the pure sciences. So this looks like a good summary. It is talking about what happens in pure sciences, what happens in the real world and how engineering and physics are linked. The first one does not even talk about engineering and physics. It just talks about the theoretical aspects of pure science and applied sciences. The unique task of the engineer is to identify, understand and interpret the design constraints to produce a successful result. Now, this one is not talking about anything about pure sciences or how it derives from it, how, how it makes approximations or anything like that. So this is not a good summary because it doesn't even mention the pure sciences and the impact of pure sciences on engineering, which is what the paragraph was about. Engineering and physics fundamentally differ on matters like bridge or a nuclear reactor. So they might differ on this, but that is just one of the examples which is cited in the paragraph. So it might be true, but it is not a good summary of the paragraph. So this one was true, but not a good summary of the paragraph. This one may have been true, but not a good summary of the paragraph. So the good summary of the paragraph is given to us in statement two, where it is talking about the linkages between engineering and physics or engineering and pure sciences 
and how engineering evolves adds to the knowledge based upon real world and real conditions, making two as our answer here. Hope you learned something from this video. Thank you. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get notifications of future videos.